<laughs> Hello everyone. Today we're going to start on a two-part adventure that's going to end up with this material. And this is in fact two standalone materials. We've got this lava that is flowing underneath and that's what we're going to build today. And then the other material is this rocks material which is affecting the lava by creating these eddies and pushing it out of the way of any area where there are rocks. So as we change the configuration, the lava flows around whatever rocks we put in its way. So each one of these sections is in fact a standalone material and it can be used with other stuff. So for example, you could have these rocks and you can put a water in here and it's going to affect whatever water you put in here, it's going to affect it the same way it's affecting this lava. Uh, the lava here in this particular example, in the final example, we're only using a small portion of what we're actually building into this lava. Uh, I've saved the flow speed because in this combination that's really the only uh, parameter that I need to keep. So we, we can change direction and speed. But what we're going to build today is actually going to have a lot more functionality to it and let's take a look at that. So that's with the land and this is just the lava and we can bump that up to 1k because that's the speed I'm going to use it as use it at in the final material and here we've got that flow speed but what we also have is the ability to turn the direction of the flow in 45 degree increments you know you, you can change the direction so you you've got it you know you've got it going in a bunch of different directions and what this allows you to do is to use it with you know, a variety of different materials. So, you know, in one particular case, you may need it to run horizontally. In another case, you may need it to run vertically or at four, 45 degrees. And then you can choose whether or not in your final material, you want to actually have that as a toggleable thing. In the material that I ended up making, I only really need it running horizontally. So there, there's no point in having it have all of that functionality that I don't, I don't need it's just going to slow down my animation but you know I've created a material that I can use again in a variety of different situations so without further ado we are going to go and now build this material all over again so here we are in substance and this is the original test material that I made and it's not overly complicated it there's just a bunch of masking stuff going on and then once you once it comes out of there it's very straightforward so let's get a new substance and we're going to use the PBR template and let's call this lava waves and first things first I'm not going to be using this metallic but I do need an emissive so I'm just gonna go ahead and switch this over and I'm going to rearrange my outputs the way I like them and we're ready to go. We're going to start by going into our library and getting a shape node and then I'm going to use the waves shape and one of the great things about the shape node is that it allows me to turn things by 45 degrees and still keep my tiling and I'm going to use that to my advantage. So let's double click on our graph. We're going to go into our input parameters and we're going to create an input. So this is a, a, a true false statement that I need to deal with here. Um, but I want to be able to give people more than just a true false. In other words, I want it more than just flipping back and forth from vertical to 45. I also want to add in that 90 degrees. So I'm not going to be able to use a true false by itself. I'm going to have to set up a drop down list. So I'm going to need an integer for that. And we're going to have three selections. We have zero for, you know, the default vertical. Then we're going to have 45 degrees. So I'm going to call this one 45. And then we're going to have another one that's going to be 90 degrees. 
So these are our labels here, and these are the actual integer values. That's the first one. And while we're here, we may as well put in our flow speed. And that's just going to be a straight up float, and we're going to call this flow. Oh, you know what? I think I forgot to put in the label here. Yep. Uh, we're going to call this turn, and this one is flow. And we can have the default as 1, the minimum is 0. Oh, you know, let's make the minimum negative 1 because we want it to change directions. And the maximum is 1. So those are going to be our two input parameters. Now, let's get back to our shape. We're going to come into our rotation, and we're going to create an empty function. I'm going to get my integer. I'm going to get a constant integer because 0 is the only one where you can use a float to get this to work. It's going to be looking for an integer, so if you're comparing it to a float value 1, it's not going to read that. It's going to just not accept it. It'll accept it, it's just not going to understand it. And we want an equal. So if integer turn equals integer 1, then I want it to be true. Otherwise, I want it to be false. So let's run through this. If turn equals 1, which means 45 degrees, then I do want this shape to turn 45 degrees. If it doesn't, then I don't want it to move at all. And the reason is because while I can turn it 45 degrees here, this shape node itself doesn't give me the capacity to turn it by 90 degrees. I'm going to have to do that with a transform node. And we're not going to do it quite yet, but in terms of this, the, the 90 degrees and the 0 degrees are going to be the same thing. We're just worrying about setting that 45 degrees here. So if it's not 45 degrees, we're leaving it alone. And that's the only thing that we're doing with that particular function here. Right. This is very straight. This doesn't look like anything resembling waves. And that means we're going to have to actually do something about that. And to do that, I'm going to get a gradient. Uh, I picked one I like. The only really thing, the only important thing really here is that it be one that tiles, so not this first one, but the linear 2 or linear 3 doesn't really matter. But what I do need is to warp it against something. So I'm going to get a Gaussian noise. And I had the scale down really small, so I think I had it down, set down to like 6 or something. It's probably even bigger than that. Yeah, 6 is good. And I'm going to get a warp node. And I'm going to warp it against this Gaussian noise. So 10 will probably be too much, but I can start sliding it down. Well, let's leave it there for now. And what I need to do is to, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set up a mask for this guy, because we're going to, we're going to warp this against a mask, but I, I want to create that mask first. So I'm going to continue down here with this gradient map, and I'm going to do kind of the same thing I do for making tree rings. I'm just going to set up some stripes in here. That's pretty nice. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Yeah. Again, we can always adjust that. Maybe add a couple of um, stripes up in the middle there. All right. Now, you'll notice that it's getting a little chunky. I mean, we're getting like these grains in here, so I'm going to get a blur. I'm also going to change this to a grayscale. And we're going to soften it up so we can use it, you know, as, as a better warp. I just want to see what it looks like, but there's going to be a transform 2D node in here that we're going to have to put some functions on, so I might as well drop it in there. But let's get this warp for our shape set up. So let's get another warp node and fix it. Now, this is probably the trickiest part of this material, but 
when I've got it warping horizontally like this, I'm not, I'm not happy with that. I mean, you may be happy with it. I wasn't happy with it. I want it to go at an angle. I think it looks better like this. So I think it looks better the other way. I'm going to do it at negative 45. I'm noticing a couple of things. My warp is too big here because I've got this line. So let's bring this down. And I'm much happier with that as opposed to this. But you know, that's an aesthetic choice. But what this means is that as this shape is turning from zero to 90 degrees, we've always, we always want this at a 45 degree angle to whatever is going on in here. So we have to put a function on this transform node that kind of mirrors what's going on here. So let's do that. But first, let's take a look at what we just did by putting in that 45 degree angle. Because this is giving me, this is what I wanted to end up doing, right? So I wanted to end up having these numbers in there. So 40, negative 45 degrees looks like 0 0.7071 with a negative version in here. If you wanted it positive 45 degrees, it's this same thing, only the negative is on this one. But you can figure all that out just by turning things the way you want them and then reading what these numbers are and then plugging them in to whatever formula you want. So let's come in here and actually put a function on here. So we're going to get that turn variable again. Oh, I didn't want to float. I want an integer. All right. So if turn equals one and turn equaling one is our 45 degrees. So if our turn is set at 45 degrees, then we want this transform matrix to be at 90 degrees. In other words, we're, we're having it doing the exact opposite of what we just did with the shape node, because that's really kind of what we wanted to do. So let's just get our variables, our constants rather, and we'll do it as we go because it's kind of easier to explain as we're doing it, right? So we're going we're gonna to have to set up a float 4 as our result, because that's what it means. So we have our two float 2s, and then we have a float 4. Now, if something is set at 90 degrees, again, you're going to switch negative numbers in here, but it's going to be 0, 1, 1, 0. So that's the pattern. So it doesn't really matter which direction it's turning. I just need it to be in that same relationship to the 45 degrees. So when, when this was at 90 or zero, I wanted a 40, I want this one at 45 and then the opposite. So we just need to set this up in here. So we had zero, one, one, zero, and one of these number ones, doesn't really matter which one, needs to be negated. And that's going to set up a 90 degree turn. So if turn is one, which is 45 degrees, and that means this thing is set at 45 degrees, I want this to be at 90. Otherwise, I want it to be at 45 degrees. So it's doing the exact opposite. And we noticed from when we actually turned it 75 degrees that, I mean, when we turned it 45 degrees, that it was all just kind of permutations on this 0 .70, 0 0.7071. And we're going to just copy this. Oh, actually, we need one of these, too. And we're just repeating what we saw. Oh, actually, no, this one, it's all the same thing. And that's 45 degrees right there. And then we'll set this as our output node. So when this shape is at 0, this is at 45. When this shape is at 45, this is at 90 or at 0. And then when we set it back again, it's at 45. And you can, you can experiment with the exact direction of this turn. So you can, you know, if you want it to flip 45 in the opposite direction, then just, you know, put the negation on a different noodle. And it's going to give you slightly different warps 
but you know that that's really an aesthetic thing the the trick is here to set this up so that these two are always cross it's it's always cross hatching it i just think it looks better at a, as a cross hatch and i promise you that's really the most complicated part of all of this and we can move this back a little bit and we've got this basic shape now which will always have these ripples going at the cross hatch and now we can start taking this and turning it even more with another transform because right now we've only got that 45 degree angle in here so it's either doing zero or not and now we're going to put 90 in here and we're also going to make it smaller because i i want to be able to tile this out i'm going to get rid of this and we don't have to put a function on this i'm just going to make it smaller there we go. Let's see what it looks like when we turn it. Why isn't this turning? Helps you, you uh, set the output node, doesn't it? Try that again. So the only thing that's not working now is this 90 degrees. And that is as it should be, because we're about to make that happen. Right, so let's get into our transform matrix. Create an empty function, get our turn variable. Okay, now we had the tiling set in as two. We, we, we halved it. So instead of one, zero, zero, one, we have two, zero, zero, two as what we had set in there before we you know, created this function. So if I set it as the output node, it's gonna come back to exactly what I had before. So if turn is less than two, so that means if turn is less, is either zero or 45, because our last one we have as the 90 degree turn, then I want it to be exactly like this. Because any 45 degree turn is gonna be handled by that shape node, and then zero I want like this, 45 is going to just turn these individual ones. And now the last thing I need to do is turn this whole thing at 90 degrees if that's what people want. So I currently have this 2002 is the default. So let's get the control in here. So if it's less than two, I don't want it to do anything. I want it to do this, okay? Otherwise, I want it to turn it 90 degrees. Now, you can go and experiment this by yourself, but I'll just tell you that the numbers that you want are these. So this is gonna, if it was, you know, single tile, it's zero, one, negative one, one, zero, or in this particular case, it's zero, negative two, two, zero. And if we set this as the output node, it's now turning them, uh-oh. This is our warp node. We're going to have to come back in here and get rid of some of that. Let's see if we can, yeah, because you see what's happening. What the warp does is it, you know, it pulls things. It, it just literally pulls the image. Um, I have an idea. Let's see if this works. Yeah, it worked. Okay, here's what I did. I set this to no tiling because it, it, this warp can now pull stuff in. It can warp that image, but there's, it, it's not tiling, so um, there's nothing for it to drag in from the sides. So we're now getting the, this clean image here. Yeah, it's clean everywhere. Maybe got a bit of a line there. Let's drag that down just a bit. Okay, crisis averted. We now have the basic setup for you know our wave pattern, but unfortunately, it doesn't look anything like a wave pattern right now. Let's set this back to zero. So what we need to do now is kind of turn it into that, and I'm just going to daisy chain it through a bunch of different blend nodes. All right. So we've got this guy and we'll take the same thing and we'll just blend it over itself using a light and blend and we can take this and just move it around 
and just start filling up that space. And as I'm doing it, I'm also going to want to keep checking how it looks depending on the turn because it is going to change it. It's going to change the way it comes together, which is why I can't just do the one. We're going to have to do this several times because they're going to have to overlap regardless of what turn we have set in here. Uh, checking it with the 45 degree turn is probably the best because that's the one that gives you the most sort of space in between everything. One more, I think. Yeah, I think that's all right. But it's really, really, really straight. So now we're going to have to do something about that. And there's a cool new node. I did, well, it's not a new node. It's new to me because I've never really noticed it before until quite recently. There's this node called the swirl node, which is pretty awesome. It functions uh, like a transform 2D in many ways. And you can apply a swirl to anything. And it comes in color and grayscale. So you can offset it like a, um, like a transform 2D. It's got a matrix like a transform 2D. And you can also set the intensity. So we've got our swirl grayscale. Let's duplicate that out. And we can make it, put it in a different spot. Maybe change the direction of it. Because we can have it go in the opposite direction as well. And as I'm doing this, I, I, I keep going back and making sure that it's working in all my different directions. And we just kind of keep going like this until we're happy with it. I think I'm going to do another one of these. OK, I think that's all right. Just you know, do it until you're happy with the shapes. You've got this long daisy chain. There's something about I'm trying to figure out which one it is. I think that's better. Yeah, I, I can get pretty obsessive with that stuff. Right, so that's our basic wave shape. They're still pretty rough, so we're going to get a blur node, and we're going to blur them down a bit. And I'm going to pop a levels node in here so we can adjust it. And that's kind of the basic waves. We're going to use this for our heights. We're going to use this for part of our normals. Probably don't want it quite that blurred. And that's essentially the background of the material done. What we haven't addressed is the, the little islands of floating rock that come on top. So these guys right here. So we're going to need, we're going to, need to create something for these, but they're going to be based off of what we just made. I should probably save this. And to do those, I'm going to start with cells. I believe it's cells three. Oh, you know what I just realized? The thing that I didn't do, because we are going to be animating this, I want this all much, much smaller. And I just realized we've been doing this all at the parent size, which I don't really want. So I'm going to come back to these first two nodes here. And I'm going to bring them down to very small. Because if you think about it, none of this stuff that we're doing now, all of this sort of undulating lava underneath, really needs to be very big. These guys, I think I'll leave at 512. And this should come out at 512. Yeah, that's what we want. Because we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll make things, I mean, the maximum we're ever going to use this material, uh, this actual lava stuff at is at 1K. And, you know, our colors are going to be at parent size. But none of this stuff is really, it has to be above 512. So let's get this cells. And again, I'm going to bring this down to much smaller. Because especially if you're doing animated materials, you, you really got to keep an eye out on that. I'm going to get a transform 2D. And this I'm going to bring up to parent size. 
uh, yeah, let's make them bigger too. So I'm going to take the cells and I'm going to bring the distance down, you know, so they're much larger. So I can, I can size it with the transform 2D node instead of tr sizing it here in the cells because it just takes a lot less processing speed. Let's get a warp node. And we'll warp it against what we're doing here. Let's make it a bit more contrasty. And this is going to represent, you know, the, the cracks in that floating crust. So, you know, the cells is, you know, by itself, it's, it's very regular. And so I'm just trying to mess it up a little bit. But I'm going to be messing it up according to these waves. In a minute, we're going to animate this as well. I just wanted to get this whole thing done because this Gaussian noise, as we... Um, as we change this disorder, we can actually have this wiggle around, and it's going to make all of this stuff wiggle. But I wanted to actually watch it do it as we're, as we're building it, so I'm, I'm going to hold off doing that for a second. Let's just get it set up so we can at least see what we're doing in the 3D viewer. Well, that looks all right. And then the other thing we need to do is actually create the islands. We need to make a mask for those. So I'm going to get another levels node. And again, it's all based off of this basic end of the daisy chain that we made. And in this levels node, I'm just going to create a mask. So it's just those tops of the waves are going to have little islands on them. And let's get a blend node. And now let's get another levels node too. And I want to make these deeper and more visible. Get them really so we can really see them. We're making a mask here, so I don't want to have any gray in there. And I bet you multiply will work here. So we now have two versions of this mask. We have sort of the, oh yeah, we've got a size difference here. And we need to set this up so this is also the right size. So that levels node has to be relative to parent. So these two now match. We have one without the cracks and one with the cracks. All right, so that's our masks done. And now we just need to hook them up. Before we, I just want to look at this before we um, go any further. Let's get this set up now. We're going to go into the disorder and we're just going to animate it. We have our flow speed variable, but it's kind of fast. I mean, I'm just going to put in the numbers that I used because t if we just use time by itself, it's like super fast. And the other thing that I wanted to do is to limit the, the slider. I want the slider for the input parameter to run the full gamut. But when I was actually fooling around with it, it just there was just it was just too loose. So in order to tighten it up, whatever is coming out of this input parameter, I'm going to just use one quarter of it. And so if I take flow and I multiply it by 0.25 before I do anything else, it's just not going to in reality move it quite so much. Then I'm going to take my time variable and I'm going to multiply it by this number. And that's just going to animate the disorder here. And for some reason, I thought I changed it, but I didn't. So you see how much better time-wise that is. Uh, I mean, it's a huge difference. Right, let's take a look and see what kind of mess we've created so far. I'm going to come into my Explorer. I'm going to publish out my lava waves, and we're going to come in and see what it looks like in here. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So these islands are, are changing shape. The, the size is pretty good. There'll be other things going on, but yeah, so far so good. All right. Let's hook you up. And let's get some color in here. I'm not going to pick colors. I'm just going to 
make them up by myself. If you want, you can go and pick a gradient off of, you know, go onto the internet and pick a lava and do it that way. But we've gone through that before, and I'm going to try not to obsess about these colors right now because I always get hung up on doing this. I need a nice purple. I need a purple every once in a while. I don't want to do that. I will leave the purples out for later. We'll, we'll add them in later. I think I'll leave that for now. The um, the higher bits are going to be the coolest bits, which is kind of why I'm making them darker. I um, also want to make sure that I have my heights in here. I mean, not that we have a height set in there, but okay. I think for now that color is okay. We'll find out in a minute. So I've set up the the sort of the base color, but I want to accentuate, you know, we're now going to be piling crust on top of, of the lava that's coming underneath. And this mask here has got what I need. It's just got it in the opposite colors of what I need. So I'm going to invert the grayscale and then I'm going to blend it on top of this. But in order to do that, since I'm blending colors, I'm going to have to get another gradient map and just convert this to a color. I don't have to do anything to it, but by running it through a gradient map like this, I've converted it to a color, which is gonna allow me to mix it with the color underneath. And I'm gonna use a multiply. And that's taken that black and it's kind of popped it on top of that purple that we made. And now we're gonna kind of adjust it a little bit. Again, this needs I just noticed that this is at 512. We have to make this at parent size because I want those colors to be at parent. That's better. So we need to work on the edges of those crusty islands right now. And to do that, we're going to take a step backwards because this stuff is now... Gonna, we're going to affect those edges with what we build for our normals because the two of them are related. I'm going to get my black and white spots one. And again, I'm going to bring this down so it's a much smaller size. I'm going to get a transform 2D and I can bump, you know, I can bump it back up again because I, I don't need this at, at a high res. I don't need this at a high res. And whenever I can, I'm going to save on doing that by making it smaller wherever I can. So this here, we're going to make our normals with, with this guy here. We're going to take the same one and we're going to make a mask out of it as well. And we can use this to chop up the edges of what we made here. And again, I keep forgetting to do this. I want this one to be parent-sized. So let's see what happens if we do this now. Now, we've taken that black stuff and we've kind of cut into it a bit more. But what's happening underneath is that darker purple. Things are getting a bit messy. I'm going to start drawing frames around stuff. I'm going to call this my normal mask. Actually, I'll call it normal grayscale. It's not really a mask as far as the normal is concerned. We can call this our cracks. Actually, we'll call this our islands. All right. That makes things a little bit easier to deal with. All right. So let's get going with our normals now. So we said we're going to use this one here for a normal. Let's get a height to normal. And set that in there. So this is going to give that the super chunkiness to, to these crusty island bits. I also want the island bits themselves and I want them along with their cracks. So they're going to be raised up a little bit. We're going to use this one. So we've got this normal and we've got this normal. Actually, you know what? No, we want this one. And we're going to blend these two guys together. And we're going to use an overlay. 
and you can't really see it, or you can hardly see it, but it's, it's got different things going on in here. I think I'm going to take this one and ratchet it down somewhat. No, that's the wrong one. I want to take the, you know what, I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to put the, the grainy stuff on top of the island shapes because it's going to give me better definition in through here. And then I can ratchet this one down. That's going to be pretty chunky. That's good. Right. So that's just for the islands. And then we need to create another one for, the, you know, like the underlying waves. And then we blend the two of those together using the island shapes, I think. Maybe we'll use this. I don't know. Let's see. I think this one might be better. In my notes, I used this one, but I think this one will be better. Let's take a look. I just realized I just put that in the emiss if we also want it in the color. And then this is our normal. Yeah, it's pretty happy. All right. So that's our normal taken care of. And let's put in our height now. Well, I know I'm going to be wanting this one. We might want to adjust it, so I'll put another levels node in here. I, I don't know. I'm trying to decide which. I think I'm going to go with this one again also for the heights. I think I like it better than the one I used in my notes. And here we're going to use a light and blend. And you know what? That looks pretty good as is. Uh, so there's, there's no need to put it. If anything, we're going to darken up the lower one. But yeah. Oh, I'm seeing problems here. Because I seem to be forgetting to do the parenting thing today for some reason. So again, we want this one to be relative to parent. Yeah, I thought those normals looked a little funky. Yeah, that's good. And then we, I think also with the height. And last but not least, we have the roughness. And for the roughness, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of wing it a little bit. It's, it's not, as far as the, this liquidy stuff is concerned, it's got, you know, it's got this high emissive, it's not, that big a deal if it's corresponding 100% to what my heights are doing and besides it's lava and a normal to height node is kind of expensive computationally so instead of doing that which is what I normally do I'm just going to get this grayscale node and just convert this normal map to a grayscale which technically speaking isn't really correspond you know it's not corresponding back to heights but it, what it is doing is giving it just like a variation in the grayscale which is honestly really all I'm worried about and then we can add another levels node in here just so we can adjust it a bit more and the only thing I'm really concerned about being rougher are my you know my actual crusty islands on top so I'm going to get a blend node and I'm going to come back to my little crusty islands on top uh, no, I'm going to use this one instead. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cheat with this grayscale. And I'm going to get another levels node. And then I'm going to use this. I'm holding down the shift key right now. And I'm going to use it as a mask instead. And now I can adjust this with the levels node. So that gives me a variety of roughness. I think I would like to see the um, those bits on top even rougher than they are now. But otherwise, just that sort of middle middle roughness that just undulates, I think is fine. But again, you, you can change them how you want. I think I want to see less sharpness in the in this edge here. So I'm going to come back to my gradient map and I'm going to adjust it. I like the colors. I just want less edge. So the farther apart I have those, the more the more bleed there is in that gradient. There, I think that's better. 
Let's see what happens when we turn it. We haven't done that for a while. It's gonna. Uh, <laughs> this could be a disaster because you really ought to do it pretty often. No, it's not too bad. I think I'm going to get rid of this. It was a little too dense for my taste. I'm going to get rid of this last one. But, you know, fool around with it how you want. Because at this, you know, th th as far as the colors and the shapes go, that's, that's really a matter of taste. It's just how you set it up. So let's, let's take a look at what this looks like when it's moving. Oh, we haven't actually set up the flow yet, but you can look at the colors. I think the problem I'm having with it right now is th these edges and I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to take care of that because they're very smooth. I think maybe we could put another warp on here because I don't want to affect the smoothness of the, of the underlying waves but I, I want these the edges of these crusty islands to be crinklier. So let's see what happens if we get a warp node. Um, yeah, I think I'm at, well, let's try it on this one and then see whether we don't want it in through here. I'm, not, I'm debating whether to put it in here or in here. Trick is we have to decide what we're going to warp it against. Just for kicks, I'm going to see what happens if I do this. First of all, I think I'm going to do it off of this one here. I'm going to put a transform 2D in here. If you haven't figured it out already, I'm completely off my notes at this point. And let's see what happens if we drop this down a lot. Yeah, no, that's not giving me what I want. That's better. I just made it bigger. And even bigger makes it better because I just I just don't want it to be quite so regular. Let's see if this works any better. Again, if you plug it in, it works much better. Let's try it again, smaller a little bit. Yeah, I think the smaller the smaller version is going to work better. It's not showing up on here. Oh, you know why? Because it's set at 512. It's not picking it up. Yeah. Those edges look a lot better now. Okay. On to the next thing. So at this point, we have to get the flow speed to work. So our flow speed, we're going to put, well, we're going to put it a couple of places. But the first place we're going to put it is on this transform 2D node here the one that does our turns. And we're going to put it on the offset. Well, before we do that, let's come back in here into our Gaussian noise. Oh, I've already got it up here. I'm just going to copy this because we're going to use that as the basis for the timing in here as well. So in the offset, we're going to create an empty function. We're going to come into the function. I'm going to paste that time flow calculation in here and I'm going to pull out a bunch of nodes. Uh, the first thing we're going to want is our turn variable and the, the one thing that's going to kind of make things a little weird is that 45 degree turn as far as our flow direction because it we're just going to have to change it somewhat from what one would normally think because we're, we're moving things around. So I mean, I, I did this through experimentation. I'm, we're just gonna, I'm just going to put this up in here. Um, we're going to need to get a negation and a vector float too. So we want it running along its own x, right? But that, that direction is actually going to change depending on whether or not it's in a 45-degree turn or not. Uh, under normal circumstances, 
Actually, we're, we're having it run along the Y. I'm sorry. Under normal circumstances, we would just have you know like a one on the X because it's not moving, and it's running along the Y because we're we're talking about it set at zero. It's actually kind of confusing because right now we have this transform set at 90 degrees. So let's get the turn set in for its default because its default is you know it's it's running like this. So we're talking about this now. Uh, along the X, it's one. It's not moving in this direction at all. Along the Y, it's flowing according to time. And if we set this at the, as the output node right now and publish it out, it's, you know, it's running along the axis, that, you know, the way that we want it to run. And if we get it to go negative one, it's going in the opposite direction. So, so that works. And it works at 90 because we've taken the whole thing. Remember, we, we took this whole thing. We just took the whole thing and we turned it 90 degrees. Where we are going to run into a problem, however, is when we do this. Because now it's running in one direction, but the, we've actually turned the waves so that it's doing that crosshatch thing only in the way that it's moving. So we have to do a little bit something extra here. And I'm going to get another one of these. And we're going to get an if-else. So if turn equals 1, which means 45 degrees, Instead of doing your regular x, y thing, we're going to negate the x and have it run along the y. And then if not, if it's either 90 or 0, then it can go ahead and do what it was doing before. Let's see if that works any better. So it's moving there. And now it's also moving in the way that we want it to here. What it's not doing is these crusty bits aren't moving along with it. It's just moving on top of them. So we just need to get them to do exactly what we got the rest of the lava to do. And this way, they'll move together. So we can take this whole thing and copy it and then put it onto our crusty bits, which is why this transform 2D is here. So we can go on its offset, empty function, paste in what we just copied, set that as the output node, and we'll publish that back out, and it should work better for us. Um, and we can turn it to 45, and it's moving along with it, and we can turn it to 90. Uh, it's doing this weird thing there. It's uh, because it's not turning either. You know what we need to do? Uh, we need to come back in here and turn it. Uh, we never put uh, that turning function on this transform 2D matrix. So again, I'm just going to come back into this original one in here. I'm going to come back into my transform matrix. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it on this guy in here that we just put the offset on. Empty function and paste. Now. Uh, there's one thing we're going to have to change in here because we've got this set to tile to 2 and we don't want that in this case. We're going to just change these 2's to 1's and this way all it's going to do is turn it but not tile it. Let's set that as the output node and let's publish it out again. Let's make this look nicer. We'll bump it up to 1k and let's have it move. Uh-oh. Yeah, I, reali I realized what the problem was. This is not set at 1. We, we, we actually had a tile down to 8, which is why it looked like it wasn't moving, because I had just made it so big. So we're going to come back in here. Actually, we're going to come in here. We're going to copy this again and paste it again. But instead of making this a 1, we're just going to replace it with the number 8. And that's going to fix it. Because that's all, I, I thought I was actually repeating what was going on in there. I wasn't. I just made it huge by accident. And that should do the trick. There we go, finally. Yeah, it was moving. It was just so huge you couldn't even see it move. That was the problem. 
turns and it moves as advertised. And once we move the resolution up, it looks actually pretty nice. So this is pretty much the, the moving lava done. I think I might adjust those colors a little bit in the next video, but, but the mechanics are there. And then what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to take this and we're going to put it into that rocky material and we're going to have it flow around the rocks. But as it stands right now, you could actually go ahead and put, plop this in anywhere you want. You could also turn it into water. I mean, water would be so easy. You just remove the crust and just change your, you know, your, your colors and put an opacity in there and you're, and you're done. But the mechanic is the same. So I hope that's been helpful and hopefully I will see you in part two.